Yo, yo, yo. Thank you for coming and joining. It has been a little bit of time. I've been in a hiatus because it was Easter family fun time. I was gone out of town. Now I'm back. Lots of things planned, lots of videos coming. But today we're getting down. It's a Wall of Death remix. Marauder, Eptic. They made an amazing song. I want to remix this song. I'm going to show you guys how we do this, how I made my tear out guns and incorporated them into this song. It's really cool, really sick. We're gonna jump into Ableton. I'm gonna show you what's up. Let's check it out first, let's listen. We got some of the second drop too, which incorporates some new calls and fills. Let's go. All right, guys, you guys see what it is, what it ain't. Remember this project, lots of the flow, lots of the guns. A lot of these resources will be available in the Patreon, so don't forget. If you guys need lessons or anything, just hit me up directly. I'll help you out with private lessons. We got this. We can get down. We're trying to see how we can make a remix that can flow so seamlessly together, how we can EQ, mix, master everything together, and obviously get these guns stacked. So I'm going to be showing you everything here. Let's go ahead and get into the main call and response. So if you see here, the original track, I kind of chopped up. And I'm chopping up the calls. So I'm paying attention to the point threes and the calls here. If this call hits and then the snare hits, I can kind of play something after the snare or even on the snare. So I experimented with that first. Now in this first section, you'll see I took out the snare, but I left this little little sweep in, which is really cool. And then we're going to be using my own snare this time. So let's hear my drum. So I'm layering some snares together and the kick pattern is basically following the original kick pattern of the song, but I'm using a bigger, fatter kick for that. And these are just chants to add some extra offbeat oomphs. Now, when we're looking at this, we want to be looking at these two bar phrases here. So if you see, if we highlight from 29 to 31, this is a length of two bars. It says at the bottom left of Ableton. This is basically the loop, the loop back point that we want to pay attention to because it'll be a call at the beginning and then the response, which is the guns, and then we loop back to the call. So pay attention to that from 29 to 31. <laughs> So you see I'm going back and forth between the original, mine, the original, and with the original I can bring in these cool sections like, like on this snare, this point three, we can layer it with this cool sound. Right here, this is like a fill section right before the two bar section, so this is helping increase the energy at the end of the two bar phrase. Then we go back. So the original song has sub in it, but I'll be automating this EQ8s on and off so that the sub will play in some sections and then in other sections, the sub will not play. So these calls have the sub in it. We have to also know what note that sub is playing and what key the song is in. So you could simply throw the song in a key finder 
This is free on the Mac App Store. It says E flat minor. And if you look at a piano, you'll see E flat is actually D sharp right here. So E flat, D sharp. So when writing this, you know, remix, edit, flip, bootleg, whenever you're paying attention to the song in Ableton, you want to know the key and the scale as well. So we're working in D sharp minor. So let's remember that. That means all the sub notes that we're going to be choosing for these guns, all the bases are also going to be in D sharp. The sub will be transposed from F sharp down to D sharp right here, negative three and complex. So we can make all these guns flow seamlessly from the original calls here. Very nice. We're also layering it with a little dubstep bass just to make it a little bit different. Going in the same rhythm and then we add an extra zap. Two zaps. And this is going to add some extra movement. After each two bar phrase, we are switching the flow. So you'll see the guns. They go kind of slow in this first two bars, but in this next two bars, they start to speed up and go faster. So these flows are also not just the regular eighth note or sixteenth. These are all going to be triplets. So you'll see at the bottom right here it says one eight. This is our beat grid size. If you hit command one and two or control one and two, you can change it. Command two makes it big. Command one makes it small. But then if you hit command three, enter triplets, and then we're going to use B using this grid to actually activate that funk. You know what I'm saying? Dubstep uses triplet grid a lot, so you want to be using it as well and practicing with it as well. Murata is a dawn in this grid, and it's a little bit harder to use, but once you get a hang of it, you'll see there's lots of good stuff. Plus, you start mixing and matching between regular grid and triplet grid, and it works very well, which is what we're doing here. It's like these are triplets, and then we kind of go back to regular grid right here. So half of it's triplet. And half of it is regular grid. So this is one eighth notes right here. So you want to be looking at these different rhythms, testing and experimenting with these different rhythms too. These are in 16th notes, going to triplets. So lots of different things you can do in all these different two bar phrases. Some songs are even four bar phrases, some songs are eight bar phrases. It really depends on what your song is calling for, but in this particular song, it's a 16 bar drop with 16 bar drop with two bar phrases. So even though the drop is short, lots of movement is happening uh, from every two bars. So then halfway point, we got to pay attention to right here is 16. Sorry, right here is 16. And then the halfway point here is going to be 37. This is where things start to speed up. So if we zoom out and look at the original, in the original, he starts to add more basses. Lots of cool triplets, lots of fast moving basses, but we're gonna EQ8 the sub. So we're gonna remove all the sub frequencies from 100 and below with this EQ8. And then we'll be using the sub from the guns here in our track. So check that. That's soloed, and this is with the guns on. I see how everything's blending together, and that's once again because all these guns have been tuned to D-sharp. Everything's playing in D-sharp, so it's in perfect harmony, and it's just working and layered well. When we get to the guns too, you'll see that some of these guns are turned down. See, like bass 2, reverb. We're going to be mixing things down so that things are not too loud as well. And really just try to blend things in as best as possible. That is the basis of basically editing the original to fit with yours. It's really important to do that. Of course, getting it in grid is important too. You need to make sure you know the original BPM. See, it's 125 here. 
So I put in a 125, put it in a warp, and that's going to link it to our BPM up here, which I made it in 130. So we kind of sped it up. It's time for the guns. Gun flow, gun layering is pretty difficult, but if you choose good source material, like just loud gun audio samples to start with, it makes things easier. It makes you need less layers. But right now you can see we have multiple. So keep in mind too, we have this main group, which is the guns. We have another group, which is where we mix everything together. And then we have our main sounds, which is the sub, sub bass, sub woofer. And then our gun group, which is all the mid basses and all the, you know, regular basses, the guns. So this gun group, obviously, we're going to EQ out and remove all the sub at 160, actually. Not even 100. We're removing a lot of these low frequencies so that it blends with the sub, because the sub is controlling all those low frequencies from 100 and below. Now, soloing the guns, they sound like this. Soloing this. Sounds like this. Keep in mind, this is negative seven on the sub. And the sub is fairly easy to make. You really just get any sine wave, boost it really loud. Right now, this is the dripment sub. Uh, let's see. I can show you guys how to make this sub so you can make it at any time. It's really easy. Basically, you would just get any sine wave. So analog, basic shapes. You can turn the master up if you want. Turn the level up. The sine wave is a sub. You have to play it at a low octave, though. So you get your... This is high octave. Press Z or X on the keyboard to go down or up. The octaves is down here. We're going to go to zero. Now I'm going to remove this out of the gun group for now. So you can feel what this regular sub is. If you had a saturator, you can add a lot of harmonics. Really boost the drive. It starts to sound crappy, muddy, shitty. So then we add an EQ8 and low pass we're only letting the lows pass through here you start to clean it up and now you get a nice loud impactful sub that can cut through you know macbook speakers and iphone speakers because most people don't have a subwoofer just you know in their iphone it's only in cars or festivals or clubs so you got to keep those things in mind so people can kind of feel or perceive the bass even though they don't have a sub but then when they do have a sub that's when that real bass music comes out. So keep those things in mind. You can really experiment with making all kinds of different subs. You can even like add more, add another EQ. You know, maybe experiment with removing these mid frequencies. Now, you really want your sub to be hitting at like negative nine lefts around there. Anything louder is going to start to impact how it sounds in the club. Right now, this signal is being sent to this Lowe's bus. And this Lowe's bus is turned down negative three. So this left meter that you're seeing is not correct because it's being sent somewhere and being turned down right here. So then we would add a left meter right here and see the actual left leftage. See if it's negative seven, then you really would want something a little bit less loud. Right now my headphones are turned down so it doesn't sound loud, but this is what's telling me and showing me that it's too loud. So negative nine, remember that's a good sweet spot for your sub. We can go here. Go back to Serum, maybe turn down the master a little bit, turn down this level. Look at our loves. Hit negative seven, so we're just going to turn down the whole track. Turn that back up. We can check our lows. Now we're hitting a nice, respectable level just by mixing it down to negative three. 
DB. Cool. So you're just going to be measuring anytime you add audio fix and change things in here and your signal flow is going to affect that. So just pay attention to where you're sitting in your signal flow so you can make good stuff. This obviously is going to be resampled. So if you, you can record this. So we're going to solo and we're going to record D sharp so that we record our root note. And you see this is a D sharp. We can move it to the beginning as well. You can even crop the clip if you want to crop, clean it up. And then this simply can be freeze and flatten. And you can make the audio like this. This is essentially what we're using when we're making the sub for the guns, but you'll see these are faded with the audio fades. So you're going to be using these fades here. This is really important that you use so that they flow from one to another. If they're too cut off, too faded, it's not going to be like powerful enough. They have to be like as much as you can fit in, but then still a little bit of fade so that they flow. See how some are longer than the others? This is adding a lot to the rhythm and the flow and the feel of these guns and your overall song. Because remember, this is bass music. This sub is running it. So you simply just do a little cut, hit it with the fade, duplicate. You would put it in triplet mode, remember? Command three. Make some little sub triplets, fix your fades. Fix your fades. Make a dumb fade, you know what I'm saying? Cool, so we're making a sub. We have our sub here. We need to look at these groups because that sub does not sound like a regular sub, right? Sounded all, all figly. But the thing is, is in the mixology room, we're actually clipping the sub and the guns together. So remember the guns group, mids, sub, it's just the lows. We have them grouped and this G clip is pumping them very high at 6.3 decibels with a little bit of softness, 23%. This is really going to be pushing it and giving it that crunch and that oomph that it needs. So let's listen to this real quick. G clip on, G clip off. Now we also have a loud rack involved up here too. So we're going to turn this off for now. So you. Okay, so this is G clip off. This is what it sounds like originally. Okay. But then we add on that G clip. We'll really get it turned up and they're like glued together at this point. We had a little bit of volume with this multiband dynamics. It's just compression, 20%. It's very little. Then the main group. This main group has effects first off. So like whenever you're doing fake outs, these effects come in handy. Filters that you can automate the on and off. The bass clef easy washout to wash it out. And then the reverb automating the dry and wet. These are all really helpful in the fake outs. But these are just special effects. We don't have to worry about these. The main thing is this loud rack with the dispersers. Really critical that we have these dispersers to get the tear out gun sound. We have three of them as well. They're going to be moved to the right to allow more of the low frequencies to come in. So you'll see that is a common thing here. You can also tune them to your scale or your root note, these notes. But I didn't in this song. So then. Loud rack is next. Let's listen with the dispersers added though. And then dispersers off. You're here it's adding like a little bit of lasery on the transient. It's like making it a little beefier at the beginning, which is really what a gun is. Plus it's adding a lot of mid-range grunge to it. This loud rack is my Dripment Loud 3 guns. It's a little bit modified from my Dripment Loud Rack 2. We have the OTTs at these settings. Two different OTTs, slightly different. Two different saturators, slightly different as well. This is the first saturator. This is the first OTT. 
then this saturator will be changed. Dry and wet and drive will be moved to adjust to the song because these will make a lot of difference if you start experimenting with these two in this loud rack in this chain. They're powerful. OTT again, saturator again. This one's left at 100%. That saturator. EQ8 boosting. We have some boosts here at 167 hertz, another boost at 6,800 hertz. Glue compressor at these settings. 5 decibel makeup gain, negative 9 dB thresh. Utility doing nothing, JST clip, adding some pumpage. Turned up a little bit, 2 blocks. Multiband dynamics again, a little bit of compression though, 15%. Not doing too much, just adding a little bit. And then JST clip, 2.3, more oomph. And ultimately clipping it at 0 so it's not going past 0. That is our loud rack, which is doing a lot. <laughs> So all that grunge and distortion starts to have its place when it's in like a big dubstep drop. But to get there, you have to find a fine balance. If this sub was turned up to zero, it would start to sound too much. We can't let it get that muddy. We can't let it get like that. It can't be overpowering. So we have to turn that sub down until it's balanced out. So those are the group, that's the group processing. Really important to get that dialed down. Plus you can customize this group processing any way you want to when making your guns. It's really important. I'm always doing that in all my different songs depending on the song or the key or the scale. A lot of these samples too will be in the root note, so like D sharp. We're picking original gun samples that people have already made to make this easier. <laughs> Lots of different gun samples and splice from different artist packs that you can find. It makes it easier. Some of them will have reverb, but very tight decay. And EQ8s will be spread out everywhere to make sure we're removing any mud or unwanted frequencies in all these samples. Because we're layering so much, we want to make sure that the end result sounds clean. So all these beginning samples need to be cleaned up as well with EQs different tarot guns here. These are going to be piano rolls, D-sharp, but we're just loading them up in samplers, using them in a different way, transposing them down if they need to in the sampler controls. Once again, getting base one shots, getting tear out gun samples. That's what you're looking for. You can then find tonal samples like this. Straight up metallic -y bell sounds. And then transient sounds like claps drums, stuff to make the beginning more impactful, the beginning of the gun. So these are the layers of the guns. Some, this one has a loud rack on it, making it a little bit loud, and a reverb. Remember, always short decay, nothing more than a second. We're doing 600 milliseconds, minimal dry and wet. Some of these are dry. So we're mixing wet and dry with the reverb to really get a nice overall gun. The main gun group, cutting it at 160, reverb, tight decay, multiband dynamics, 25%, very minimal compression here, saturation, turning it up 5 dB, 33% dry and wet, making it loud here, balancing it with the dry and wet. Then JST clip to clip it off at zero with two times over sampling on. This is a nice little chain to get that gun clean and up there and then go get clipped with the sub and then eventually head into the dispersers for the final rundown man those guns are dope and then remember man in the second drop we're just making slight changes like speeding up the rhythm in some of these guns and then the fills and the calls are going to be a little bit different because in the original song the second drop was a little bit different, so we can use some of those elements. So like, Marada's like, starts to come in, we start getting new vibes because of this, and this helps with the variations in the second drop, so it's very fun to do this, and I think it's important that you guys do, you know, remixes, bootlegs, flips, whatever you can do 
to remix the music that you love is always good and share it with the world show people what you can do you know what it is i hope you guys enjoy this we're getting down we're making remixes we're making tear out like marata like epic hope you guys have a good day stay fresh keep it real i'll see you later the iron man will break you